Ukrainian commanders have indicated that the army plans to continue offensive operations over the coming winter to capitalize on recent battlefield successes, and thereby continue with momentum that they have created. This will serve to prevent Russian forces from regaining the battlefield initiative and to disrupt any potential counterattack in the spring. As the hard freeze approaches in late December, Ukrainian forces will be again able to exploit the weather conditions. Winter is usually the best season for mechanized warfare in Ukraine whereas spring is the nightmare season for fighting in Ukraine. The thaw swells rivers and streams and turns fields into seas of mud, it's at this time that we get to meet the famous Rasputitsa. Ukrainian forces likely are preparing to take advantage of frozen terrain to move more easily than they could in the muddy autumn months. As Russia continues to attack in and around Bakhmut and Avdiivka, so the Ukrainians have been fighting in the direction of Krimina and Svartov. Currently the Ukrainians are attacking north of Krimina in an effort to take the P-66 which is a local main road, and thereby cut of the town itself. They have taken Chervena Papivka and are moving on Jitlivka. If they can continue moving south, they will cut off the Russian forces around Bakhmut thereby ending the siege. If I can ask you to drop a like and subscribe that would be super. Please leave a comment. The fighting has been highly attritional, and the Ukrainians have taken a lot of casualties with their men looking exhausted from constant battle and artillery bombardment. This area of the war feels as though it's been transported back in time to World War I and the muddy trenches. It's a painful and miserable slog where the soldiers are not only fighting the enemy but Mother Nature at the same time. We are going to share some footage from the area, give you a few comments and hope that you find it interesting and informative. The battle in this Arblast has been decided by heavy artillery exchanges, and the timely calling of their support has made the difference between success and failure. In this footage a squad of Wagner troops were making an assault towards the petrol station near Bakhmut, when their advance was checked by highly accurate Ukrainian artillery. As you can see from the video you can see that they sustained significant casualties. With support from the West, Ukraine has received some of the very best artillery and rocket systems in the world. The effect of HIMARS has been well discussed, but let's not forget the importance of the smart artillery munitions like the Bonus and M982 Excalibur guided projectiles. The Bonus is a 155mm NATO artillery round, that consists of a 104-pound heavy artillery projectile containing two autonomous, sensor-fused, fire-and-forget submunitions, that just love to kill tanks. The M982 projectiles are GPS-guided munitions capable of being used in danger-close support situations within 250 to 490 feet of friendly forces or civilians or for highly accurate strikes. It's these types of munitions that make the difference in close-fought battles like what we are seeing in and around Bakhmut and Krimina. What's more, they negate the need for large concentrations of fire, with a few highly accurate volleys normally being enough to settle the situation. These Russians were caught by a mine whilst riding atop their armored vehicle. This happened near Bakhmut and casualties were incurred and the resulting retreat was quick. The driver of what looks like a BMP2 had the best seat in the house. I cannot tell if the MBT is active or already knocked out. Looks like it could be AT-62. I am not one to feel sorry for the Russians, but the swiftness of this attack highlights the dangers of being in the war zone. Getting ready for the attack and before it can start you taken out of the equation, back to base for Borscht and Vodka. This footage was apparently from a base that was evacuated near the Svartov Krimina area. However, some excellent geolocation work has cited this base as being closer to Mykolaiv. It was included because I thought I was damn interesting to see this mix of various captured machines that were no doubt turned against the invaders shortly thereafter. I count two MBTs, one refueling truck and a self-propelled artillery piece that looks like a 2S19 MSTA. I love this picture of these two machine gunners, the Milligram 42 still front and center on the battlefield. Now it stands to reason that this is in fact not technically in Milligram 42 but one of the later models that had a changed designation. However, for us, it will always be the Milligram 42 or Spandau. Firing 1,200 rounds per minute, this beast can move, these two gents look exhausted. They have no doubt seen far too much war to last a lifetime. The next video is a Ukrainian soldier filming himself whilst he defends his sector of the trench. I have left the sound up, because I would love to know what he is saying if there are any Ukrainians watching this. That's your boy. Was 
Vai, 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 Two RPG gunners fire at targets that, judging by the angles they are firing at, is some distance away. What is still intriguing to see is the continued use of the venerable RPG, despite the influx of far more advanced western systems like the in-law. What it shows is that reliability and access to munitions will often be the deciding the factor. Plus if you are trying to suppress soft targets like infantry or thin-skinned machines, this weapon can still do the job. In conclusion, if the Ukrainians can hold the Russians at Bakhmut, they can give themselves the time their other forces need to swing down from the north and to force a Russian withdrawal or better, yet cut them off in a pocket, 